Today, we're going to make zhizetao, or lion's head meatballs, which are popular in the eastern part of China. Now, they're usually served in a simple but rich tasting broth, and they have a remarkably tender texture, and Dan's gonna tell us more. Cookbook author uh, Xiu Ching Chao has a recipe in her amazing cookbook, Chinese Soul Food, for these lion's head meatballs. And the way she describes them is so perfect. It's a dish that gives more than it takes. Oh, that's nice. There's not much to put this together, but that fills your house with these amazing smells. It's super comforting. So we've got our stand mixer bowl here. I'm gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda to the bowl and a half teaspoon of salt. And together, it's gonna give it this nice cohesive texture and hold on to tons of juice, which is really important. Okay. And then I've got two tablespoons of water here as well. And I'm just gonna whisk this until both are dissolved in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. Now it is time for the pork. Now mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of times hand chopped pork for yeah. this. I'm gonna use ground pork here, which just makes it really, really easy. If you have the option of a fattier ground pork at the supermarket, absolutely go for it. Mm. It really fits with this dish. It's supposed to be super rich. This is two pounds of ground pork, and we want it to come directly in contact with that baking soda mixture. That way it'll work its best and keep it super moist and super juicy. Okay, great. So now we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients, and these meatballs are all about the pork. You wanna taste that meatiness, and everything else is just an accent to it. So we have an egg here that's lightly beaten, that's gonna really provide some richness, but also nice texture. We have the whites of two scallions that I minced up, so just that white and light green part. And then I have two tablespoons of soy sauce. I also have two tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, four teaspoons of sugar. Mmm, a little bit of sweetness. A Little bit of sweetness, you know, get that beautiful balance of sweet and savory from all that soy. I've got two teaspoons of grated fresh ginger, mm. and finally a half a teaspoon of white pepper. That's gonna add some beautiful floral flavors. I'm just gonna give this a quick mix with my spatula. Now we're gonna go into our stand mixer. So a lot of times you see this dish and they're hand formed, but you slap the meat back and forth. Mm. And so what you're doing there is agitating it and getting that myosin network going. We're gonna let the machine do the work for us here. I'm using the paddle attachment. We're gonna go on medium speed for about 45 to 60 seconds, and we want the meat to get really sticky and come away from the sides of the bowl a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, so that's about 60 seconds, and you can see the meat has gotten really nice and sticky. It's almost sticking to the paddle itself. Yeah, and it's changed in color. It's quite a bit lighter. So now it's time to make our meatballs. And so one of the key things here is we've made this sticky on purpose, mm -hmm. right? So using a little bit of water when you're forming your meatballs is really, really helpful. I'm gonna use a half cup measure here. We're looking for about four and a half ounces per meatball. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be three inches. So these are, these are big meatballs. Yeah. And again, a little bit, of, little bit of water on the hands is good. Now I just pop this out. And I like to just do a motion like that and get a beautiful meatball there. Yeah, you're not having to pack it very much. It's really just cohesive all on its own. Absolutely. Now that, that is a big meatball. Right? It's like a tennis ball. Yeah, like a tennis ball. Yeah. So that's our eight meatballs, and it's time to cook them. So what we have is four cups of chicken broth in this Dutch oven. We mm -hmm. had it at a boil, so we're gonna shut that off and move it off heat. Awesome, so I'm gonna put these in, and I like to do them kind of one at a time. I'm gonna get seven around the outside and one in the middle. So we're gonna be braising. These are not going to be completely covered with the broth, and that's totally fine. They're gonna season the broth. The broth is gonna help season them. It's gonna make a beautiful soup at the end. And a special one in the middle. Mm -hmm. Great, so if you can cover that, I'm gonna go wash my hands. Great. So that step of vigorously mixing the pork is key when making the style of meatball. Here's why. Mixing ground meat encourages a protein called myosin to come out of the muscle and mesh together into a sticky gel. And the more you mix the meat, the more myosin you get, which is exactly what we want. As the meatballs cook, the gel sets, which helps the meat trap moisture and adds extra structure which helps the meatballs stay intact, moist, and tender during cooking. So the next part of this is I've we formed all that myosin mm -hmm. and we're gonna get into cooking them. We're gonna cook them pretty low and slow in a braise. So we're gonna go into a 325 degree oven for about an hour and it's gonna take all of that nice collagen and then the meat and then turn it into really supple gelatin. So our meatballs have braised for an hour and they're hanging out over there. The next part of this is the lion's mane and that actually comes from Napa cabbage. <laughs> and we're just gonna be underneath the meatballs and it's gonna give the whole effect of the lion's head meatball. So we're gonna prep this, it's really, really easy. Basically cut lengthwise into quarters. We're just gonna simply take the core out which is really easy with Napa cabbage. It's just that last little bit there. And then we simply cut it into two inch lengths. Oh, nice big pieces. Exactly. Nice frilly big mane. <laughs> so we tried having the cabbage in there from the very beginning and we found that it ended up being 
kind of too soft and starting to fall apart. So that's why we're saving it here. We'll give it another 30 minutes in the oven. Okay. So what we're gonna do is take this off. You can see our meatballs. They've got some really nice browning on mm -hmm. top. Some recipes have a deep frying step ahead of time. Some use soy sauce to get more color. But we found that you actually get really nice browning just in the pot where they're uncovered on the top there. I'm gonna take these out. Whoa, that smells incredible. Doesn't that smell good? Yes. So I'm gonna get the cabbage in here and we just basically want it all on the bottom, kind of in a single layer. It's a decent amount of cabbage. It is, you know, it's gonna cook down a ton in there. Beautiful, so the next key is just when I put them back, I'm gonna put the brown side down so we get a little more browning on the top as well. Makes sense. I'm gonna cover this again. We're gonna go back into our 325 degree oven for 30 minutes. Everything's gonna be tender and perfect. All right. So some versions of this dish feature rice noodles in it, mm. and it's just beautiful. It makes it a little bit more of a complete meal. I have four ounces of rice vermicelli here, and I've got four quarts of boiling water. So I'm just gonna shut off the heat, slide this off the heat. It's a really great way to cook these. It's super gentle. Yeah, they're so easy to overcook and turn to mush. I'm just gonna slide these in. And I'm gonna let these sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, just stirring occasionally, especially as they start to come apart so they don't stick together. So I've pulled our meatballs out of the oven after that 30 minutes. Our rice noodles are gonna be perfectly cooked at this point. So I'm just gonna drain these and I'm gonna give them a quick rinse. It gets rid of a little excess starch so they don't mm -hmm. clump up. I just really like to make sure I get all that water off. We've got really intensely flavored broth. We want that to be in the bowl, not water. Great. All right, so now I've got two bowls here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the noodles. This is enough for four. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in the bottom of each. Beautiful. So we'll come over here. All right, the big reveal. Oh, look at mm, that. The aroma is incredible. So nice, right? Oh my goodness. I see what you mean by comforting. It is such a rich smell. And your whole house smells like that. It's just the best. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of cabbage and I'm gonna have a little fun with it and just arrange it so we get a little of that lion's mane look to it. <laughs> I love cabbage cooked like this. Mm -hmm. It's so tender, it ends up being really sweet too. Yep. It's picked up obviously all of that flavor from that porky, chickeny broth. Mm -hmm. And then do a couple of meatballs. And I'll come back with the broth. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Don't you wish it was like snowing outside right now? <laughs> nice fire, an old movie on the right? TV. It'd be perfect. And then finally, we've got some scallion greens there. Those are from our scallions earlier. If you'd like to add a little bit to the top. Always. Beautiful and flavorful. Mm -hmm. All right, let's dig in. Okay. I've got to dive into this broth. Yeah, I'm gonna go right for a meatball. Oh, you know, that would soothe whatever ails you. Right? It is so flavorful, so rich, and it's just the broth and the meatballs and the cabbage that simmered together. It's incredible that it transforms into this. And this is just perfect. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh, I like your technique there. Mm. It's just so good. All of the juices and all of the fat are trapped in there along with those beautiful seasonings. But it's really tender because of that long braising time. Mm. It's just out of this world. Mm. And the cabbage has taken on the flavor of the broth, but it still has some texture. It's nice and tender, not mushy. Mm -hmm. Dan, this is wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. If you want to make these incredibly aromatic meatballs, mix ground pork, baking soda, and a few aromatics together using a mixer. Give the meatballs a good head start in the oven before adding the cabbage and serve with rice noodles. From America's Test Kitchen, an ultra comforting recipe for lion's head meatballs. You can find this recipe and all the recipes and product reviews from this season, along with select episodes at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash TV. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.